Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church today. The liturgy begins on page 299 of the Book of Common Prayer, and you can also download a complete bulletin from the online worship page of our website. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 119, verses 105 through 112, found on page 772 of the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read this in unison. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are a joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Please join me in hymn 405, All Things Bright and Beautiful. We will sing verses 1 and 4, hymn 405. <laughs>
of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he had got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they had not had much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they did not have depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen, hear that the parable of the sower. When everyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away the, the sown in its heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who heard the word and immediately received it with joy. Yet such a person had no root, but endured only for a while, and when troubled, or persecutions arise and account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for that which sown, was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lures of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for the one was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty and in another third, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last weekend, Father Keith told us about a book he had just finished reading, one that was actually recommended by the family that you're about to see baptized. It was a book called Scandalous Witness by Southern Bible professor Lee Camp. I want to remind us of a concept and a quote that he pulled from Camp's work, that we are to understand Christianity as a politic. It's not political in the sense that it is liberal or conservative. It's not meant to be a national creed. Rather, Camp calls Christianity an individual's choice to accept an all-encompassing vision of human history an all-encompassing manner of communal life that includes how to deal with people and authority, with marriage and money, with offenses and enemies and more. It's not merely something with political implications, rather it is a way of being human, of understanding mortal life as completely tied to the divine. To put it another way, this is not about voting based on when you think life matters or starts or ends or any of that. It's not about our mortal world that is dependent upon earthly allegiances and alliances, leaders and values. This is about living completely and thoroughly as a Christian. Now, as I said, you heard a little bit about this last week, so you may say, why are we going through it again? But I think this is something that we have to embrace. In particular, anyone who is calling themselves Christian, anyone who is claiming this faith, needs to understand what they are claiming. But more importantly, as we enter a climate of the next four months that I anticipate getting more and more contentious, we need to remember where our base and foundation is. Now Romans, the lesson that we heard today, kind of relates to that. It tells us that we are called out of the mortal world. We're no longer of the flesh, Paul says, but now of the Spirit, thanks to the gift of Christ and the grace of God. And being in the Spirit is something that gives us great gifts, great rights in the kingdom of heaven. However, as I've talked a lot before, with rights come responsibilities. We need to recognize and live according to certain responsibilities as a result of receiving this gift. Those called to walk according to the Spirit, as Paul says, are bound to the Spirit, bound to the ways of the Spirit. 
and the Spirit calls us to a specific life. As Camp says, we are to, quote, live a rightly ordered human community, live in a rightly ordered human community that engenders flourishing, justice, and the peace of God. Now, I believe that when we strive for that kind of community, one of justice and peace and hope, one ordained by God, we are able to share joy and love from the depths of our soul. And we are able to do that even in moments of adversity. Now, why, why do we care about this? Besides the contentiousness that's coming, I want to look at the gospel lesson from today. Just a reminder, this gospel lesson is giving us a parable. Well, that's pretty, you know, Jesus explains so that we can make sure we get it. But let's remember, a sower goes out and throws seeds everywhere. These seeds land in a lot of different places, on the path, on the rocks, in the thorns, in the good soil. Now, we can look at the sower's actions and the random distribution of seeds as something that is an affirmation of the random chance that happens in the world. Things like, why do bad things happen to good people? Or why did God let that person die? Just random. Or, to bring it to our current situation, like living in the mortal world, defined by platforms that may or may not be stable, encompassing, and giving us the ability to thrive. Or, we can hear this parable, and, and I'm going to take a little license here, I'll just admit that up front, but we can hear this parable and recognize that though the seeds can land anywhere, the sacrifice of Jesus, the love of God that is available to all, that's the good soil. And it's not just available, but I would argue that it is the default for people who, like Paul said to the Romans, come of the Spirit. We, that we are given the agency to stay in this good soil, to take root in the life of faith, to not, or not, and instead be eaten or scorched or choked or simply blown away. In our staff meeting this week, Dr. Scow shared how she sees this lesson as an invitation to assess where she is in her spiritual journey. Which seed is she right now? I'm not going to make her answer that right now, but I kind of love this idea and encourage everyone to think about it this way. I believe that good soil is always possible, if not probable and necessary in a life of Christ. I also know that I do not always see it, do not always live by it, do not always hope in it. Maybe it's a difficult day, or maybe it's just like we heard last week that I'm weary, or maybe it's that I've forgotten that my identity is to be grounded in the politic of Christianity instead of what's going on in the world around me. Whatever it is, I think I have a good root that still sometimes blows or gets trampled on or stuck in a forest fire or whatever, but with intentional work and awareness of myself and my relationships with God and others, with a reorienting of my soul, I can find myself back in that healthy soil. Now in just a moment, we will baptize two souls into the body of Christ and welcome one more into the Episcopal Church. Joel, Sophie and Lisa, I am not going to promise that every day is going to be perfect from here on out. And I'm not going to promise that the church will be perfect or that I will be perfect. I am going to promise, though, that in accepting a life in Christ, in renewing your faith, you are given a glimpse of the good soil from which life grows and thrives. If things are difficult, Ask yourself which seed you are and what might have pulled you from that which leads you to grow and to give, to love, and to be loved. The scripture tells us that living a life in Christ, living of the Spirit, is not easy. And while that is true, it is also true that a life in and of God is one where you can feel and share hope and the promise of not just good soil, the everlasting good news of God. Live in the Spirit and live in the good news. Amen. Amen.
you are following along in your prayer book, we're turning now to page 301, or uh, page 3 in the, the bulletin found online. Okay. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Sophie Marie Manuela and Joel Gregory Manuela to receive the sacrament of baptism. Sophie and Joel, do you desire to be baptized? Will you be responsible for seeing that the children you present are brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, I will with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child, these children to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Sophie and Joel, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that drive you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Yes, I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Lisa, do you wish to be welcomed as a member of All Saints Episcopal Church and into the fellowship of this congregation? I do. Will all of you who witness this vows do all in your power to support Lisa, Sophie, and Joel in their life in Christ. If so, we will. Say we will. <laughs> Let us join together with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father of my life, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, and the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, I will with God's God help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I, I will, will, with God's, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, I will with, with God's, God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth, and for this person who has renewed her commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the ways of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Send them into the world to witness to your love. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. to let folks at home know that today we will be blessing water as we always do. We also have 
some holy water from the Jordan River that will be added to it, connecting us to all these generations and generations for whom Christ has been the light, the love, and the hope. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin to everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your will, to your Son, we bring into this fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Sophie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sophie, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and mark this Christ's own forever. Yay. Sophie. <laughs> May you always know the light of Christ. Amen. Okay, Joel, you ready? Do you want your glasses to stay on? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can't. I'm just okay. Joel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Joel, may you always know the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Can you just turn and look? We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. All praise and thanks to you, most merciful.
merciful Father, for adopting us as your own children, for incorporating us into your holy church, and for making us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named, grant you to be strengthened with might by his Holy Spirit, that Christ dwelling in your hearts by faith, you may be filled with the whole souls of God. Amen. I invite you now to join us in hymn number 490, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 